we finished, we, we got a couple things on uh, languages, and we have three things that were left open as a meeting. We had 12, 50, uh, everybody have out their mining summary that Dan has put together. Did you want to talk about the Attorney General letter first, or after? Because you left that open. I just handed it out. Yes, Represent Buckland. Yeah, we'll take five. Oh, I, no, no, I, no. I need to get home. Well, let's keep going. If you got to go, go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. Yeah. Tell them about you, isn't it? There you go. Uh, no, I, actually, what I need to get out for you is the letter, uh, the answer that we asked, the question we asked, but my computer is dead, so I will get that and send it to you tonight when I get home. Okay. <clears throat> All right, Dan. Um, so you should all have the new the new draft. Uh, this says on the top for committee discussion 429-15. Uh, just to not confuse anyone with creating new numbers, uh, I have, if it's something that was added, uh, I gave it uh, a number with a uh, letter designation. Um, right. Uh, and then anything that has a strike through, through it was something that the there was a majority consensus at least to remove from the proposal. Um, everything that doesn't have a strike through uh, was something that was uh, kept in. Um, so we can start at the beginning. Uh, <clears throat> this is section zero, just because I didn't want to add a new section. Um, well, I guess it's still new, it's just zero. Uh, this is the suggestion that Representative Welsh had made right. as far as a general statement. So this, this would, uh, just because because declarations of policy or legislative intent are already in statute, even though most of them were enacted before the year 2000, um, they're usually at the beginning of an act. Uh, I just threw this into the short title provision. Uh, this encompasses what was referenced at the end of the discussion last time, um, three things uh, in terms of the policy and intent of the legislature, uh, that it would allow for commercial metal mining uh, in Maine, that uh, the regulatory and statutory framework had to be protective of public health, safety, and the environment, and to ensure that the full cost of mining, including any uh, correction or remediation of an accident or failure, uh, are borne by the permittee and not the state. Um, I noted this last time, and I, I will reiterate it. Um, the revisor's office does not like uh, declarations of policy or intent in the main revised statutes. Oh, we can at least get, we got there. I mean, ultimately, so everybody knows, I think we've said this, this is going to go to a hearing process. We'll may change a bunch of stuff that's here, so we'll leave it in for now and then ultimately take it out. <coughs> go ahead, Representative Martin. Yeah, they're going to take it out, but what we could do, obviously, is for the hearing purpose, it's fine. Uh, and and so it's also something that could be said on the floor. Yeah, I mean, right. And so... That, Make the legislative where, intent pretty clear. Yeah, and I did. I did speak with uh, Ed Sharpen, who's the the deputy revisor, about this. Um, it, one of his suggestions was you could stick something similar to this in the summary of the bill, so it would go along with the, the history of the bill, um, and would be there as a reference, but it wouldn't um, be put in the statutes. It's, it's not. It's no, no. It's a good idea. Okay, keep going, Dan. Um, <coughs> Section one, uh, no change from prior. Section two, no change from prior. Section three, uh, no change, but uh, there was in my notes an outstanding question. I believe Representative Tucker asked it about uh, the meaning of water reservoirs as used um, in the third line from the bottom in the definition of mining area. Uh, and I think this was something the department was going to get back to us on. Yep. And it looks like they did. So I asked Mark Stebbins, our mining coordinator, um, he uh, reflected back that this was a definition that had been developed in the, uh, in the framework law itself, um, and he believed uh, that it was actually taken from Mich Michigan's law uh, and rules when he went back and looked. It was taken from Michigan's rules. Um, he conferred with uh, the other members of our mining team. It is their uh, position and consensus that it, a water reservoir is a storage, a water storage pond because of the uh, large amounts of water that are needed for the processing 
um, we would certainly be okay with um, adding an, an another definition to the uh, to the rules that reflects that a water reservoir is a water storage pond to reflect uh, um, our staff's understanding of what that would mean. That'd be okay with everybody. Any objection? I think is just a question. Do I have any objection? No. I look at you. Okay. So that would be what we do is we'd add a definition to water reservoir, and if you could give Dan the language for that, that would be good. Sure. Okay. Good. <clears throat> um, so then we're on to section four, which is changes to the rules. Okay. Uh, one through uh, four are unchanged. Um, I think. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong. I believe we did not actually end up having a discussion of five. We skipped over it because I lumped it in with the uh, changes to the rules just to reflect the changes to the definitions in the statute. Um, so this is the definition of passive treatment system. This was something that um, Jeff Reardon had suggested uh, to add the term self-maintaining to the definition. Um, so you'll see the definition of passive treatment system here reads, the process of removing metals and or acidity through the use of self-maintaining chemical, biological, and phys physical removal processes that occur naturally in the environment. Uh, that is the definition that's already in the rules with the exception of the word self-maintaining, which has been added in. Okay, so we're, I'm sorry. Okay. We're on page right here, five, yeah. five, back to right, oh, right there, here. right there. Everybody got it, we're on page two, and number five on page two, Representative Duchesne. Thank you, Senator. I just want to check with the department to see if they would understand the term in a regulatory meaning. Would, would you interpret that to mean self-maintaining as in you can walk away and never have to touch it again? So, I, I mean, again, remember this is going to go to public hearing, so those that either agree or object to it certainly can bring it forward. But is there any objection to that being moved in? No objection. Okay. Uh, this wasn't something that was uh, explicitly asked for, um, but I, I decided to put it in there anyways um, just because I still felt that I was sort of unclear with the differences between wet mine waste unit and tailings impoundment. Uh, it may be that committee members are are, are not, um, are, are clear with that. Uh, uh, this would basically amend the definition of tailings impoundment to clarify um, that a tailings impoundment is not considered a wet mine waste unit. And I believe that's consistent with the department's testimony um, previously. The, the language as used in here may need some uh, tweaking uh, if it's something that you would be interested in including. Not if it's during during the operation. It is an active part of the mine. It's after the operation that it's a wet waste rock. My understanding was different, um, and I'm certainly not don't have the background with this. But my understanding was that the waste rock is put into a, a wet mine a waste, waste unit, and the tailings impoundment is uh, where the the materials that come out of the beneficiation and treatment um, right. processes are stored. Maybe this is just my confusion. No, you're not. No, no. Go ahead. Heather, come on up. A wet mine waste unit defines how the, uh, how the waste material is treated. The definition of waste mine, wa wet mine waste unit um, says that it is a unit that uses water as a cover to minimize okay. oxygen. Sorry, wait, wait. Uh, sorry. Uh, page nine of the provisionally adopted rules, section two, quad quadruple L. I apologize. It is a. It is a waste. Mine waste unit that uses water as cover to minimize oxygen advection and diffuse to group A waste in a manner that effectively inhibits formation of acid rock drainage. Group A waste could be either tailings or it could be waste rock. 
Um, the, the issue here is, is it the type of uh, uh, w waste material that um, could be effectively um, prevented from escaping into the, ap into the uh, environment by covering it with a bunch of water to prevent the oxygen from doing its work. So that is the definition of a wet, wet mine waste unit. The definition of a tailings impoundment says is on page eight in its triple uh, quadruple B, uh, a C quadruple C means an area on which is deposited by hydraulic or other means material that is separated from the metallic product in the beneficiation or treatment of minerals including any surrounding dikes constructed to contain the material. So this basically says this is the stuff that results, ends up after you've crushed and treated the rock with chemicals and all the other stuff that happens in the processing plant. That being said, I don't think that it is, it would be improper to state in the tailings impoundment definition that a tailings impoundment um, is not a wet mine waste unit because if you combine that description that it, a tailings and impoundment is not a wet mine waste unit and if you choose to um, uh, allow the rules to go forward with the proposal that Senator Saviello you have been um, suggesting that wet mine waste units can't be used after closure that would make it clear that regardless of before or after closure, a tailings you can't get out of, you can't get out of, um, you can't find a loophole to allow for wet mine waste units after closure by by saying it's a tailings impoundment. Does that make sense? So I think putting that in there is uh, fine. It makes sense to me, but I'm not so sure it makes sense to everybody else. Uh, so slow, slow down and okay. go. I mean, basically, it's what you're saying is that when you get to the point of closure, this tailings pond. If it's using water to close it, is not acceptable. That's right. So I, that's what I've said consistently from day one. If prior say to that, that again. so if so day is closure. To say that the treatment for this closure is w that it's a tailings pile, therefore I can't I can't close it or I'm going to put water over the top of it is not acceptable. But prior to that, during the operation, there's going to be water coming in and out. They're going to be dewatering as they do the process. And so that it's still going to be there. So it's a treatment process, if you will, to recover the water to reuse it. It's not a closure. So it's dependent on dewatering. Dewatering and operations. If the mine's still operating, that's not a waste rock treatment thing. You're continuing, as I understand it, maybe somebody can correct me, but it's during that process, it's an active part of the operation. But is it dewatering during the operation? I I, I think it's a combination of stuff. It, it, my understanding is, number one, you want to reuse as much of the water as you possibly can. You do not want to let the water go because you've got to put fresh water into it. And the more you use the water, the less you have to pull up and treat. So you're going to be pulling that water out as you go. Plus, as the pond begins to fill up, you're going to be wanting to close that. You're not going to wait to the last day to put a cover on top of it. You're going to be covering it as you go along. Now, maybe I've said that wrong, but that's my understanding. I mean, Bob, have you worked on this? I mean, am I saying it wrong? Or? Um, I'm not sure what you just said, <laughs> to be honest with let you. Me, let, me, let me use a landfill as an example. Let me, let me use that as an example. I have a landfill that, it was, that as I went along, I brought it up to final grade. Every day, I covered part of it, let it dewater itself out. It wasn't at its final peak, but when I got to its final cover, I put final cover on top of it. So. During the time I was getting up to that elevation, I was continually de pulling the water out, continually managing it appropriately. But when I got to the last point, that was it. I covered it with HDPE to a feet of soil, and it was done. But you weren't covering it with water as you went, but then, though, but, which this is big. A, a tailings impoundment <coughs> is one of the mining areas. A tailings impoundment is one of the one of the components to a mining operation. Right. It is where you put the tailings when you're done the processing. A wet mine waste unit is the ultimate disposal <coughs> unit characterization. You're saying it's, it's like saying landfill or um, or any other you know treatment uh, system. So the tailings impoundment is like 
you know, a you know, your excavation hole or your processing plant or your what have you. The wet mine waste unit is how you ultimately treat it in the end. And so this definition of tailings impoundment, it actually says uh, deposited by hydraulic or other means. What that's saying is there are many different ways to get the tailings to a place where you're, where you're holding it during the mining operation. That's what that definition is for. Uh, the other definition is for what do you ultimately do with it? And what, it, what I believe is a clear understanding of the vast majority of the committee, if not all of the committee, is you don't want the, uh, you don't want the wet mine waste unit to be in a means of ultimate disposal. So, in order to ensure that um, nobody can argue later that uh, because we're going to call it a tailings impoundment, quote unquote, that we get at, we 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 get around the wet mine waste unit, you can actually say in the tailings impoundment definition, a, a wet mine waste unit is 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 not a tailings impoundment. I don't think it's it's another instance where I, I'm not sure it's necessary because I think they're two different things. However, there are many places where we <laughs> say that type of thing just to make it crystal clear. Yeah, Representative Harlow. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair. So, uh, and I, I've talked with the people on this committee several between yesterday or between um, Monday and today about the wet mine waste unit. And I, I have a star next to it, and I remember a discussion that we were completely, we were getting rid of that definition. Am I correct? We, or did we decided not to on Monday, is that correct? No, what, I, what the, con the confusion is, is that when the mine is closed, right. it is not an acceptable alternative. But while, in my mind, but while the mine is operating, it is one of the tools you use to manage your waste as you generate it. So we so are keeping that definition then? That's, but I, we haven't decided yet. We're having the conversation. Yes, Representative Buckland and Representative Martin. Um, I heard, what, thank you, Mr. Chair, I heard what you said, Senator Saviello, but I thought we were just saying that the wet mine waste unit is what you use to, you know, to, when, when you're closing down the mine, right, to put it all away. But, but I also just heard that we're not allowing that. As a permanent, as a permanent solution, right? The tailings pond would not be an acceptable alternative. That's what Heather just. No, mine waste unit wouldn't be as. Right. An example of where a wet mine waste unit might be utilized during the course of the mine. Um, alternative A, you have enough topography, geology, and structural and engineering for you to determine that the tailings are going to go into a tailings impoundment. And so the engineers have determined that this stuff is going to go into a pond. It's going to be wet, um, but it's going to be basically a slurry and it's right on the surface. Alternative B, um, the topography allows for a deeper um, impoundment so that that same material is covered while while the mine operation is going on and so while the mine operation is going on the tailings is is less likely to be exposed to the environment while the mine operation is going on there might be times when alternative a is more appropriate especially if if there um, are means uh, especially if the plan is more amenable to um, moving or manipulating the tailings during the process. There are times when alternative B will be the more appropriate one because um, in the meantime it's being covered with enough water that nothing is happening to it and then something can happen to it before the mine is closed. So there will be times when one might be more appropriate than the other during the operation of the mine. The question is what happens when you know the mine operator is getting ready to walk away from the mine? Do you want to leave the tailings with a b big bunch of water on the top of it or do you want to find another way to um, cap and <coughs> encapsulate, close and render that those tailings inert from the surrounding environment? Or, I shouldn't say inert from the surrounding environment, prevent the release to the surrounding environment. Um, that is that is the yep, difference between the two. Representative Martin. Andy Buckland. 
but let me see if I understand what it is we're trying to understand. During the course of operation of the mine, it is, it is possible to have a wet operation. If in the course of the mine that that particular unit is going to be no longer used, then it, uh, it will not be wet any longer, and it cannot be wet. At the end of the closure of the mine, it must, it, wet is no longer allowed under any condition. I, I, I'm pausing only because you're using the term wet, and what I'm referring to is the layer of water over the over the, the tailings, the slurry. Right, but upon closure, that would not be allowed. Um, upon closure, there would not be allowed, under the discussion, the proposal that you're discussing, right. that would not be allowed. Right, nor, would it, be a, water right. nor would it be allowed if a particular site were, for whatever reason, were to be closed during the operation of the mine and no longer used, then you would not leave it wet. I think I follow you. Can you say that one more time, that last one? Yeah, let's assume that for whatever reason that location is not a usable site or people don't, whatever, DEP decides that maybe you should do something with it and start another one. That one that's now left alone and no longer used in the process will now end up having to be closed and that cannot be wet. That is correct because that is our requirement for cont contemporaneous reclamation okay. that is in the rules okay. is we say, you know, in your mind plan, you have to demonstrate to us and we review that from time to time if, and if, update if, it. If, if yeah. it's not, you know, if, if something can be closed contemporaneously, we require that you do so. Now, if that's right, I understand it. Yes. Well, Representative Duchesne. Thank you, Senator. Um, let me confuse this even more. <laughs> Page 73, there's final closure requirements for wet mine waste units. 73 in the rules. Page 73 of the rules. Final closure requirements for wet mine waste units are as follows. Depth of water and saturated cover, if applicable, over the waste must be maintained. If we aren't going to have wet mine waste units right. ever, right. do we need this language in there anymore? Because that's not currently in our amended version. Right, no? Espe especially since the, the term is final closure requirements. Um, uh, it's, it's been a while since I read this provision. Um, don't want to make a, a misstatement, but certainly that would be one of those sections that we would be, that Dan would, uh, Dan's language um, th that's been presented to you would direct us to uh, address to reflect the fact that wet mine waste units wouldn't be able to be used after um, the closure of the site. Now, can we find anywhere in the rules to say outright that there will be no permanent tailings ponds left on the landscape when we're done? I, I don't believe that language is currently in here. You know, because I think the concern is, can there be a tailings pond that's left there with this wet cover on it mm -hmm. um, that, can, that can be there forever? Yeah, and I don't believe, I, I might be wrong, and I'm sure somebody will, I'm sure I will get uh, the, the correction if I'm wrong. I don't believe that that exact language is in there. It would be part of the design it, and. I think it's got it by saying what Sure. <coughs> Representative Buckland, uh, Representative Welsh, Buckland, and then uh, Tucker. I don't have it. Oh, uh, no, Welsh is going. Uh, Representative Welsh, Buckland, <laughs> Tucker. So I have two questions. When you were talking about the tailings, slurry tailings, and, um, you had an A and a B. And the A, you mentioned, which is at the top, would you cover that with uh, some kind of a cover that's not water? For, for the my hypothetical scenarios yes. and under scenario A, um, I, I'm not sure. Uh, this is the short answer, which is why I said if the engineers agreed that that was the best way to handle, you know, if the engineers and the and our scientists agreed that that was the best way to and a safe way to handle the uh, tailings impoundment, I'm not sure how much of that would be covered with water. It's it would really be a design. Discussion. You had an A where it was more at the top, and right. then a B where it had sunk down. Or, or the you know, would there be enough water to cause it to not have an oxy oxygen reactive process? I don't. Well, but water still is the covering. That that's the buffer to mm. it being. Right. The question is how much water. Right. Okay. 
him, but that's question one. Question two is waste rock. When you dig out the stuff, and, and the waste rock can be class A, waste rock where it's bad stuff, that gets put in a hole somewhere correct and then covered with dirt or something. That's when we're talking, we're, there's no water involved in that, correct? That is frequently, my understanding is that is frequently what, it, what occurs with the waste rock is a lot of times that is put back in the excavated area um, and, uh, um, and is some, that a waste cemented rock? in was one way it was des described to me in one example. Isn't of that a waste rock unit then? Isn't that what we're calling a waste rock unit? A, a waste unit um, is something different than a wet mine waste unit. A wet mine waste unit um, which is hard to say, so that's why I'm saying it slowly. I know, it's for all um, of us. Is, is, as I described in the definition, it's a very specific type of waste unit that allows for the rock to, you know, the, the um, material to sit there forever um, with just a layer of water over it. Um, but that's what we're saying we're not allowing. That's correct. That is something different than returning a rock um, to a hole and doing things to that rock to secure to secure it physically chemi chemically biologically to ensure that there's no uh, and rules, release to the environment what are we saying we must do with that kind of class a it it waste really rock? it it really depends on the mind plan what the most appropriate thing is some mines, it actually might end up in some sort of lined uh, landfill type of situation. Some mines, it might end up in a hole. It, we really do need some flexibility to allow for the site to really tell us what would be the safest, most appropriate, most engineered disposition. Could that disposition. include water then? Could that no. include a water cover? No. no. Okay. Representative Buckland and Buck Representative <coughs> Sorry. Thank you, and I think this goes back to Representative Duchesne's question. One of my questions in the beginning was, if you have a tailings pond, tailings impoundment, that's part of the process, they're pulling some of the water out to recirculate it and mm -hmm. whatnot, and you've got this slurry sitting in the pond. When you're done with it, and it's still wet, albeit a slurry, what gets done with it? Does it become a West Mine waste unit if with uh, a waste we know WMWU does it come? Because, uh, a, wa a wet mine waste unit, does it become one by virtue of the fact that it's sitting there and then you cover it with water? Well, uh, an insulatory layer of water? Well, what we're saying is that we can't... We, we can't do that, right? We wouldn't, we wouldn't do that under what's being discussed. Um, what typically, what, what frequently happens um, is that it would be dewatered, um, which means that, I mean, and we're not talking powder, but basically they suck as much water out of it as possible. Excuse me to interrupt, but during the process or way, way down the line at the end? Down the line at the end. Or it could be at the update at the end of the day. Or, yeah, the pond is closed. I right. Mean, you got to be. be careful. If I'm finished with this pond today, and they come into you at the end of the year and say this pond is closed. You're going to begin the process to say start sucking the water out, start treating right. it. You're not going to wait to the year 20. You're going to be doing this an incremental step. So saying that it won't happen till the end is not correct. I I, I agree. I agree. But I was misunderstanding the question. Yeah, okay, no, that's fine. It can be done during operation. That's correct. Right, and that gets to the contemporaneous contemporaneous reclamation requirements. Right. Say as you finish one thing, you you start another. Um, but at that point, they would be, um, I'm using all these technical terms, suck the water out um, and, and get, that, get that material as, as, you know, as dry as, as, as feasible and then that would be um, put into um, you know, some sort of landfill type of situation. I believe you saw pictures of an example of um, what, a ta what ultimate tailings disposition was with the plants growing up through. Again, there are different ways to deal with the ultimate disposition of the tailings and 
it depends on the site um, and it depends on you know the the conditions and the engineering what will be the most appropriate um, we can say what won't happen and that's the water cover over the top in the end and the, and the applicant has to show that they can close the mine given the characteristics of the geologic unit that they, they have to show in advance that they can close the mine without the need for that kind of right. storage. Right. right. Their yeah. plan that they come to us, you know, way at the beginning before anything happens has to demonstrate that, you know, that their operation from the moment that they begin to build a road all the way till the mine is closed. And they have to demonstrate that it'll meet all the standards, including um, that it can be closed without the use of any of these things, without perpetual treatment, which is the whole point, which is how we got into this discussion to begin right. with. Uh, so without any kind of wet cover, essentially? That's right. Okay. Because how, we, how, this, <laughs> how this came about to begin with was we had actually in our rules that we presented to the Board of Environmental Protection, we had said perpetual treatment's not allowed after 30 years, that's it. During discussions with the board, one of our engineers said, well, there might be times when it's actually more environmentally appropriate to put some water on the top of the thing permanently, that would be perpetual treatment. Do you want to do an exception to it? The board said yes. Um, so if the committee is, it sounds like what the committee is, is willing to do is to say, I understand your, all your discussion there, but we're going back to what you said before, you know, no perpetual treatment. You know, by the way, we're going to change the number of years for what perpetual treatment means. So under this under this, that scenario there's nothing that can be considered perpetual treatment and putting water on the top of waste will no longer be considered uh, an exception